All right, so today we're going to talk about functions, right? So just basic uh, course on like functions, because this is important for all of them. So you have a function. We usually call it f or g. I'll call it f. So f from a to b. Okay, so this is the notation that people use for functions always, right? Like in all math, like in higher level math. A here has a name. A is called uh, the domain. So A is called the domain. And anyone actually know what B is called? Codomain. Codomain! Yes, codomain! Codomain! Codomain. So A is called the domain and B is uh, called the codomain. <laughs> codomain, right? So, codomain. Uh, so for example, say we had a uh, function F uh, from the set of real numbers, that's R, to um, let's say uh, the set of real numbers. And we define it by f of x um, equals x squared. So this function takes x and then it squares it, right? So this is pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. So let's, let's think about the graph of this function. Um, so if you graph this, what is the graph of x squared? Do you all know? Parabola. It's a parabola, right? So it looks like a u. So it looks uh, something like this, right? So it's a parabola. So clearly the domain is all the x's. It's all the inputs, right? So you see it's the entire uh, real line. Right? Again, this is stuff is super useful. You can know all the math in the world, but if you don't know this, it's like, ugh, you need this for all high-level math. So that's your domain. You'll notice something, though. Um, there's a word that people often use in math. It's called the range. The range is all the y values, and you go from the bottom up. What's the smallest y value here? Zero. zero. So it'd be zero to infinity. right? So that would be the range in this case. You'll notice the range is different from the codomain, right? So it's different. I used to have this teacher, he was really, really good. He, uh, he actually went to like, Harvard and Brown and stuff. He was like, we don't use range in my classroom. Like, the guy was like a legend. But why? Because range doesn't typically, um, I don't know, range can mean a lot of things in mathematics, right? So codomain would be all of this, right? So the range is a subset of the codomain. Whenever actually, whenever the, uh, the range is equal to the codomain, we say the function is onto or surjective. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, so that's uh, domain, codomain. So domain, codomain. In this case, uh, they're both the same. Here's another, here's another example. Uh, say we have f from, <coughs> let's do some fancy notation, uh, or not. How about just keeping it simple? Uh, 0 to infinity to the set of real numbers. And this is a famous function, f of x equals the natural log of x. Right, the natural log of x. So in this case, this is the domain, and this is the codomain. Right? In this case, can we also have, write that as positive rules? That's exactly what it's going to do, Kyle. Yes, yes. I was going to write it um, like this, right? That's the set of positive. That's what I wanted to do. When I said fancy notation, I was like, oh, let me do that. But for some reason, I became weak and didn't do it. Um, <laughs> so that's the graph of ln. Oh, look, the range this time is all real numbers, right? So the range is equal to the codomain, right? So this is an onto function. OK, so now that we have that out of the way, we have some terminology out of the way. So we have domain and, and codomain. All right, let's talk about injective functions. So injective functions are super key. Oh, erase. So we say uh, a function f from a to b is injective. So injective. Um, also, it's also called one to one. So you can do you can do this. So one to one. If whenever the outputs are the same, the inputs are also the same. Okay. So equal outputs give rise to equal inputs. So if you have f of a equal to f of b. Um, this implies um, that A is equal to B. So equal outputs give rise to, to equal inputs, right? So, um, and uh, so what does that mean uh, intuitively? So if this, if I can try to explain it, if this is A uh, and um, this is B, right? So what would be an example of um, an injective function? So, there you go from one point to point. yeah, That's so every... like, Point maps. So like this point here would go here, this point here goes here, and this point here goes here. That would be, that's injective, that's one to one, right? So everything gets hit <laughs> at most one time. So this number goes here, this number goes here, this number goes here. You can't have this. This is an example of something that's not one to one. So here we go, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. This would not be one to one, right? This would not be one to one. Your first um, example, mm -hmm. that's um, injective, but it's not surjective. It's not surjective. Why? Because this one is not, it's not mapped. It's not mapped to. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. So one to one intuitively means that everything in the codomain gets hit at most uh, once. So this one does not one to one because this y value, this element in the codomain, 
gets hit uh, twice. That's what it means intuitively. That's what it means intuitively. That was kind of rough, but who cares? Let's do a proof. Let's prove a function is one to one. Let me show you how to do that. So, so I'm going to erase this, and we'll prove a function. Uh, what happens to the eraser? Oh, it's over there. Oh, well. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> is this recorded? Yeah. <laughs> so it's all right. No one knows who I am. So we take. <laughs> My name is Joey. All right, so, so we have a function uh, from, so let's, let's do an easy one, right? So from a set of real numbers uh, to the set of real numbers. So define this by, I don't know, let's keep it really simple. F of x, I don't know, it's late. It's like, what time is it? 5, 5 to 16? Yeah, let's keep it simple. Baby steps. 3x plus 2. Right. Straight line. Right. right. Straight line. So we're going to prove it's injective or one to one, right? By the way, you know something from math. The horizontal line test, remember that? The horizontal line test? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Crosses one time, it's, it, it's one to one by the horizontal line test, right? So, anyways, that's the same thing. All right, so remember the definition said whenever f of a is equal to f of b, we have to have a equal to b. So, proof. So, we start by saying suppose that f of a is equal to f of b. You always start your one to one proofs like this. So, if you take any kind of discrete math, like, oh, Aren't you doing CS? Maybe? Possibly? Right. Yeah. So discrete math, you do stuff like this. Right? It's part of a discrete math course. Uh, so suppose the outputs are the same. Now we have to show that A is equal to B. Well, there's only one thing to do at this point, right? F of A, you just plug in the A. So then, what would F of A be in this case? What do you think? <coughs> 3A plus 2. Very good. Yeah, 3A plus 2. 3B plus 2 sounds equal to 3B plus 2. Boom, like a pro. That's how pros do it, right? So you just plug in the A, plug in the B. Piece of cake, right? Does it make sense? Cody? Or No. Dick. Dylan. What? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Three two. Huh? What, what is it? You're what? Shook. Shook? Shook. That's from a rap song. Like that mob deep. Mob deep. Shook. <laughs> Scared to look or something. I don't know. So then. So <laughs> I know the whole song. So we can talk about that later. So minus two. We should make rap videos. And then, how do you solve this? What do you would do now? Three. Divide by three. <clears throat> and also, why we use the variables is because we have to show that it works for all values. Right. And we hear what Kyle said. Yeah. That's work for all values, right? Typically, you would say, you know, for some a, b in the domain. But I was being a little terse, so that's it. This shows f is one to one. The proof is complete. So, so that's how you show a function is one to one. Harp on this, but it's because like you know a lot of proof class stuff. If you just put a number, you know, and just put a number, that's not good enough because it's just true for that value. You're saying it's just true for that value. Yeah. Not necessarily all values. Yeah, like in pre-calc, remember that extra credit assignment, the linear algebra stuff? Yeah. With the matrices, a lot of people would turn it, they would write numbers. I just, I didn't even look, I just crossed it out. So <laughs> I didn't even give it back. <laughs> yeah. What, plug in numbers? No. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you have to, you do, yeah, yeah, I don't even, that's the most common thing. Exactly. Like, it's like, yeah. People are like, oh, three by three matrix. What's the matrix? Well, we make one up. <laughs> she can't do that. Right? All right, so that's one to one. So basically, you do this, and then you show that's true, and that's how you show it's one to one. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right, let's do one to now. So let's do one to really quickly. Ooh, maybe that's reasonably cool at the end. Ooh, I have an idea. Oh, maybe, maybe. Okay, so let's define onto really quick. So f a to b is onto or surjective if. So for all little b in capital B, that means for all in math. So I don't know if you've ever seen that, Dylan. For all little b in capital B. Uh, what's this backwards e mean? There exists. There exists. There exists a little a in capital A. Such that f of little a goes to little b. This is beautiful. And again, oh, it says onto. I cannot emphasize how important this is for math. I mean, most people who learn this stuff, like most people who like go on YouTube and search for this stuff, they're probably like in a discrete math class. But in higher level math, like when you study countability, like showing two sets have the same number of elements, that's called cardinality. It's the same thing, right? <coughs> uh, anytime you're showing anything is the same, an isomorphism, stuff like that, you have to know this stuff. So basically, what does this mean intuitively? So here's A, and then here's B. So it means for any little B here that you pick, you can pick any of these. You can, you can find, what's that? No one gets left behind. No one gets left behind. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you can find a little a that goes all the way, all the way to b, right? So everything gets hit at least once. All right, everything gets hit at least once, right? So, so uh, uh, injective meant, meant everything gets hit <coughs> at least uh, at most once, right? So just so injective was 
at uh, most once. So nothing can get hit twice. Remember that with the injective, we have the two, the two, the two things, and we're saying surjective. Surjective. We're saying uh, it's at least once. So if everything gets hit at least once and at most once, so both happen. Can anyone put that into words? Bijection. Yeah. And so so if it's at least once and at most once, what's another way? What's another way to say that? Everything gets hit. What, what am I looking for? Anyone know? Egg, egg, eggs. Exactly, exactly once. Oh, right. Man. If everything gets hit at most one time, right? So 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 if so check it out. Check it out. This is this is where the beauty comes in. So everything. So here you have this. So everything is gonna get hit at most one time. So everything gets hit. So X gets hit. X gets hit. X gets hit. X gets hit. So X means it gets hit. So everything got hit at most one, at least one time by surjectivity, at least one time by surjectivity, and then by injectivity, everything got hit one time. at most one time. So then everything gets hit once and exactly once. When you put these together, you get the word bijective. So if you have a function that is injective and surjective, it's called bijective or a bijection. Sometimes. Like Lisa used the word earlier today, I don't know if you were here, she said one-to-one -one correspondence. Mm -hmm. When you use the word one-to-one -one correspondence, it's the same thing as bijective. So, um, so bijective means everything gets hit exactly, exactly once, right? So, yes? So when we're just playing with functions on regular uh, pre-calculus yeah, algebra classes, yeah. <laughs> we're just only talking about bijective. When yeah. we say a function is one-to-one. Yeah, yeah, they don't even talk about surjective. They don't even define them this way in the calculus one, two, three courses. They don't need to. It's only when you get to like discrete math, computer science, um, advanced math where you do this, and then, and then you start talking about stuff like this. And typically, Albert, they just do stuff like this, right? They just say f of x equals square root of x plus two. They don't give you the domain, they don't give you the domain, they don't give you the co-domain, right? You just kind of like, it's kind of implied, you gotta figure it out. And high level math, like in research papers and stuff, it's usually always just given, like it's always like, you know, clearly defined. Let's do a simple example of showing something is onto. Um, let's try this one. So f. Um, let's see if I can think of a better one. Um, I, I can't think of a better one. I'm weak. Uh, let's go from um, the real numbers uh, <coughs> to the real numbers set minus zero to um, the real numbers, to the real numbers, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to come up with an example at the same time, so uh, to the real numbers set minus zero. I'm just using different notation to make you think. This means r set minus zero. This is all the non-zero real numbers. Another way to write this, I was thinking of Kyle, because he mentioned this earlier, is r star. r star is typically the non-zero uh, real numbers, so if you see an r star. And let's define this by, so define by f of x equals one over x. Let's show it's onto. Show it's onto. Okay, so proof. So just let me write the definition of onto up here again so you see it. It's very key. So f from a to b is onto if uh, for all little b in capital B, there exists a little a in capital A such that, anyone remember the rest? f of Little a goes to b. Yeah, to b. So that's the definition. So when you're satisfying this definition, you always start with this condition here, OK? So you start by saying, suppose little b is in capital B, or take any little b in capital B. You can say, suppose it's arbitrary and stuff like that, but I'll just be a little bit terse here for time. Take any b in this set here. I almost said group, too much group theory. So take any little b in this little uh, set here, right? Uh, one second. Don't don't, don't pause it. Hey, I, it's okay. I sent you an email. You're good. I can't get into my email. Oh, okay. You're good though. You're good till Thursday or Wednesday. You're good. Uh, I'll talk to you in like ten minutes. Okay. But you're good. You're, you're... Can you text me? I don't. I don't have a phone. What? Well, I, I don't have a phone. It... Oh, you can't get into your email. Hang out for ten minutes. You got ten okay. minutes? Right. Yeah. Hang out. You stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay. Hang out. Okay. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> take any little b here. Uh, and then, so we have that. So we need, what do we need? We need A such that, we need this, right? That's what we need, right? You head it up? Yeah. So what's F of A in this case? One over A. So we need this, right? So we're working backwards. This is really key. Can you see, Kyle? 
Uh, can you see? Yeah. yeah. So, so we need A such that this is true. So we need an A such that f of A is equal to B. So we're working backwards. This is how you figure the problem out. This is the most important part. So f of A is 1 over A. So we have to solve this for A. How do we solve this for A? What do we do? What do we multiply by? A. By A. So you put an A here. You put an A here. So you get 1 equals BA. And what's the next thing you do to solve for A? Divide, Divide by B. And, and so we end up with, with, with A equals 1 over B, right? Okay. So now... That's going to be that's going to be our a. So then we take b in here. So then since okay, so this is going to be the a we want, right? So we need to show it exists, okay? Um, so in order to show that it exists, uh, you have to explain why it makes sense. So note, uh, one over b makes sense <laughs> because b is not zero. So set A equal to 1 over B, which is in our domain. It's a little confusing because this is the codomain, this is the domain, codomain, domain, codomain, domain, codomain, domain, right? Then we have to show that f of A is equal to B. So let's do it. So f of uh, A, well, that's uh, 1 over A. <coughs> so I can get in here. And A is 1 over B, so this is 1 over 1 over B which is 1 times b over 1, which is b. So look at that. We took any little b, right? This is our big b. We took any little b and big b. We showed there exists an a and big a. This is our big a, such that f of a is equal to little b. That shows the function is a surjection. Would yeah. it be valid to say that also since b is a positive integer, or no, we have to specify that it can't be equal to 0? Uh, it's not, no, they're real numbers here, so it doesn't have to be an integer in this case, right? Oh, right. Right, right, just has to, this, this, this has to make sense. Also, you know what, I probably should have said this is not zero, right? So it makes sense, and it's not zero, so. Right, right. I probably should have said that, right? Like, right. if you're taking a class, and someone was grading this, they might look at it and be like, oh, game over, and like, no, no, no. they would take uh, points off. So that's all I wanted to talk about today, so just injective functions, surjective functions. So if it's injective and it's surjective, do you remember what it's called? Bijective. Bijective, so that's it, that's it.